Why couldn't Noah go fishing on the ark? Why? He only had two worms. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Welcome back to the Hanks and Christian podcast. Oh, that's Today, clever. we've got a very special guest. A very special guest. Miss yeah. Johnson, welcome yes. to the show. Teacher Thank guest! You. First teacher on the show. Oh, it is. Congratulations. I am excited as well. And I'm one of the newest ones. Yeah. 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 We'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. that. We'll get to that. So, for announcements, uh, this week on Thursday, I think, we've got the Christmas choir concert. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, high school choir is gonna sing for you guys. Yeah. So mm-hmm. make sure you show up and see us. And support us, bro. Yeah, we've been working pretty hard. So. Yeah, yeah dude. There you go. And uh, yeah, so first topic for today, we are basically just talking about Miss Johnson's experience as a new teacher. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we just yeah, we were just wondering like, what's it like, dude? Yeah. Like being the first year teacher at Hingston. Yeah, at Hingston. How's your experience going, man? Like. Going? Well. It's been super fun. Yeah. Um, the small classes, this is the smallest school that I've taught at. Right. Mm-hmm. And so of course it is. I feel like even though I only teach maybe 40 students, 40. Wow. Dude. I know probably at least double that. Cool. Yeah. And so I get to know everybody. That's the thing. I love that. So, yeah, I just have had a great time. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, what do you teach, actually? I teach... Uh, sixth grade social studies, uh-huh. uh, 11th grade U.S. history, 9th and 10th grade foundations. Dang, that's a lot. Mm-hmm. And it's more. ninth grade geography, as Dang. well as secondary basketball. Ooh, dude. Which, wow. Yeah. You're everywhere, bro. That's a yeah. lot of responsibility for the first year in school. Yeah, yeah. I just jump in with both feet and yeah. then try to learn how to swim. Mm, that's pretty cool. I mean, obviously, this is going to come with some challenges, right? Like, Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. How, how has that challenged you? Well... I uh, I think the biggest challenge has been because I moved here from Thailand. Oh wow! Mm. So getting used to the climate. Thailand. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> and it gets dark super early. Right. Yes. And I feel like at five p.m. I should be in bed. Mm. Because right. Yeah, definitely. Because it's pretty dark. I, it's dark. Yeah. I'm like, wait, mm-hmm. it's five. I shouldn't go to bed right now. Right. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, definitely. Don't do that. Moscow messes with you. Like everything's dark. Yeah. Yes. Like you go in the morning, it's dark. And you or in the building, you don't see outside, and then you come yeah. out, and it's dark. So yeah, it just feels dark yeah. all the time. Yeah, it's dark ages. Yeah. And I mean, even during the day, it's just gray. Like, it's bright, but it's gray. Yeah. It's sad. Can't I'm ready for snow. Yeah. Are you ready for snow? Are you sure? <laughs> I really am. I yeah. love the snow. You lo- Oh. And damn. it was a draw of moving here, was knowing mm. that it was going to snow. And oh, so, really? really? Yes. Does it snow in Thailand? No. Mm. It's super hot there. Right. Mm. Okay, I imagine. Yeah. See, I, see, here's my thing. I'm from California, and I went to Washington from California. <laughs> And I loved snow before, okay. right? But I lived here for six years. Now you're over it. Now I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I want to dead. So yeah. Yeah. you might like snow now. Just yeah. wait, just wait, just wait. Ask me next year. Yeah, what? I'll ask you next year. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, when I'm gone. Yeah, just send me a message. <laughs> anyway, okay, so ask you how much challenge the weather. For real, bro. <laughs> I mean, language. Done. There you go. Um, yeah, getting to know all the students. Right. Yeah. That's been hard. Getting to know everybody's names. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude. <laughs> Even in a class of six, I'm like, whose name goes with who? <laughs> you know, at the beginning. All the time. You know? right. So, had to get all that done. With the but, Korean students. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Uh-huh. But then I come up with fun ways to memorize their names. Oh, boy. Or yeah. they have their notebooks in front of them that have their name on it, and then I just am like, oh, that's you. Oh. Dude, life hack. Don't yeah. tell anybody. Okay. Don't tell anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just like the most possible way to get to all the students in the school to know. Yeah. You've exposed yeah. yourself. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Everybody yeah. knows Man, the truth. Everyone knows it now. Edit it. Caught it. All right, all right, all right, all right. So what were your, like, first impressions of Inkson? What did you think oh, yeah. in the beginning? So mm-hmm. I visited last April because yeah. um, it was over my spring break, and... They were like, we want to give you the job, but Thailand to Russia is a big change, so maybe you want to come here. And I was like, yeah, that's a good idea, because maybe I've gone insane. Because <laughs> I loved Thailand. Like, I didn't leave yes. because I didn't like it. I loved, you know, where I was working and the people that I was with, and mm-hmm. I just felt like God was telling me to come here. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay, I will come visit. And even in the one day that I was on Hinkson's campus, I just felt... Like, it was a family, yeah. you know, yes. and I was being, you know, everybody was like, ooh, check out the new person, and yeah, um, exactly. I was sitting in the U.S. history class that I now teach, and uh, I think it was JJ, 
I didn't know he was JJ at the time. But he comes up to me and he goes, who are you? (laughs) And I explained and he goes, awesome. It's good to see you here. You know, like, that that was was so cool. I was like, okay, you know, this 11th grader is coming up to me and asking, you know, Mm -hmm. questions. That's good. I like that. So... Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, like the the school's small enough that when anybody new comes to the yeah. everyone knows. Like, like, what? Yeah. New yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, lots of fun. Mm-hmm. Okay, wait. So like you were in Thailand and you went to Moscow. Do you have like this like? You sound like you like travel a lot. I like, do. Yeah, I've like, been to like ten countries. Ten Ooh. countries. Yeah, mm-hmm. most of them in Asia. I haven't been anywhere in Europe except Moscow. Wow. Really. And so everywhere else, I've been. In Asia, except for Shoot. Canada. Okay. <laughs> and so, so Canada I've been is to, Asia. No, I said except. Oh, except, okay. Except. Yes. Karen is American Asia. Well, yeah. Yeah. It, that's true. I did. I wasn't in Vancouver, and Vancouver is seventy percent Asian. Oh, really? Yes. That's Wait. how I first fell in love with Asian culture. Was oh. in Vancouver. Wow. That's and cool. I was like, okay, God's calling me to Southeast Asia, and so. I went to Malaysia and Vietnam and South Korea oh, and shoot. Japan and then really? Thailand. Really? Did you teach there too? No, I oh. was just visiting or doing missions. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. so I've yeah. been all over. I've been to China. Where are you actually from? I'm curious. I'm from North Carolina. <laughs> You're from North, North Carolina. Carolina. Yeah, I grew up there, lived 18 years there, but my whole life I was like, I want to leave this really tiny town. Yeah. Mm. That, Sorry, that's that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. All the traveling. Yeah. And I've been to over 20 states. 20 mm-hmm. states. Okay. Yeah. All right, dude. <laughs> so, did a lot of traveling and uh, just love traveling. Wait, yeah. okay. So, were you always traveling for just like missions or like? Fun for and fun. missions, yes. Mm-hmm. Both. Mm-hmm. You know? How like, do you get the money this, to do that? I have, well, I save a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Money. So, when I taught in America and was making money teaching, because currently I don't really make money teaching. Either. Right. Um, so, I would put $500 into a savings mm-hmm. every time. And so that allowed me both summers that I was off yeah. to go travel. And nice. so that's, I, me and a friend went on backpacking trip through Asia, and that's when we went to Malaysia, Vietnam, and South Korea. Nice. Oh. And, you know, just had a great time. And I still do that now. I save money so that I yeah. can go travel later. Oh. And so, yeah. Do you have a favorite country? Oh man, <laughs> South Korea. Okay, so I only Wrong. spent I only spent two days. Well, a two day, days? one day, a day in South Korea. Okay, wow. it was on my bucket list to eat kimchi. There you go. And Korean BBQ. Korean, yes, Korean barbecue. Yes, of course. And so um, that's what I wanted to do, and I needed a day to do that, and mm-hmm. so I did it. Fair, um, fair. But it was wonderful <laughs> to go because we went from Malaysia where it was really hot, of course, to Vietnam where it was hotter, uh-huh. and that didn't make sense to us because we were already melting in mm-hmm. Malaysia. And now you melt more. Then to go to South Korea, it was a lot cooler. Oh yeah. We were like, oh, we have found like this is what heaven feels like. You know, like, <laughs> this is the temperature yeah. that heaven would be like. You know, Ooh. that's what we decided. And then the food was heavenly oh, yeah. too. Dude, oh honestly, my gosh, yeah, it is. food is the everywhere. People were amazing. Mm -hmm. I freaked out a lady that was giving me, I think it was bubble tea, because I said, I said, thank you in Korean, and she looked at me like, oh my gosh. (laughs) And then she tried to speak to me in Korean, I'm like, that's the only word I know, so I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I loved Korea, but I would say my favorite country that I've been to is Thailand. Mm -hmm. There you go, that's fair. (laughs) Because I lived there for two years, so Mm -hmm. I mean. And like, you're like familiar with it more? Yes, and I know I'm conversational in Thai because oh. I took Thai lessons, and mm. and so Dude. I had a lot of fun. How many languages do you know? I'm actually curious. Um, I can say hello and like Everyone. seven, seven, but that's just hi. That's yeah. It. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Okay. All right, dude. That's you're like so cultured, bro. Like, <laughs> well, I don't really feel that way most of the time. But Why? I try to blend. Well, my biggest thing is when I go to a new place, I want to try to blend in as much as possible. Right. But when you're a white person in Asia, you stand out. Mm. No matter and what. And so, you do. no matter what, like yeah. I can't blend in because no. I'm not, you know. So the way that I blended in in Thailand was learning Thai. Boom. And so, <coughs> you know, I tried to blend in as much as possible. You'll you'll blend in fine in Russia, like in that That's true. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I feel like when there are people that come up to me when I'm sitting on a bus stop and they start talking to me, and I'm like, I have zero idea what you're saying. Oh, really? So I usually shrug and I say no. 
<laughs> and so oh, that really works. Then. They usually go like they nod their head and then they walk away. And oh. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Miss, the boss is on fire. No. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But for, for why, like, why do they want to talk to you? I have no idea. That's weird. It's there was one lady yeah. that was really angry because I was waiting for a bus, and a bus had pulled up, but it wasn't the one that I needed. Right. And she had just walked up. And the door was open, and as soon as she walked and like stood at the door because she was going to get on, the doors closed and the bus. Oh, you know, oh, and yeah, then she bro. looks at me, and she starts speaking, and I know that she is talking about being annoyed that the bus you know yeah, just left without light, her, yeah. and so I laughed. And <laughs> said no. And she was okay with that. Oh, and she bro. laughed and then she kind of walked away. And I was like, yes. <laughs> it worked again. You, you're Russian. Social now. interaction. Yeah. Russian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. That's my spot to everything now. Just yeah. ha no. I kind of agree to that, how Russia is kind of different from me from every other country that I've been into. Yeah. It's just maybe it's because I lived in here for like my whole life. Yeah. But it's just way more comfortable to be in Russia than actually being in Korea. Because okay. I feel like a foreigner in Korea. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. a strange feeling. Because it's not your it's not your culture. It is anymore. Yeah. But it should it, be. It, it isn't. And everybody expects it to be your culture. But yeah. It's not. Exactly. Yeah. It's like the same with me in America, because like I mean, I like America, and I've been there several times, but it's just not home. Mm. Like, yeah, it's, it's, not it's, it's too yeah. different. I was People. born here, and this is like yeah. my homeland. So it's motherland. Oh, motherland. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh well, I had a question in mind in your like experience with <clears throat> Hinkson because Hinkson is like kind of. It's very special in its own way because mm -hmm. of how many people there are in Hinkson. And I wanted to know, like, how would you uh, compare it with, like, actual other public schools? Okay, so I've taught at, I taught at a public school in America, and then I taught at a school very similar to Hinkson in Thailand, except oh, really? it was about 215 students, mm -hmm. so a little bit bigger. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it is no comparison to schools in America. Mm -hmm. I literally did not want to teach anymore after teaching two years in America. Oh, yeah. Really? Because government bureaucracy Ooh. is one thing. But <laughs> also just yeah, the students were not good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't enjoy I didn't have fun. Bad company. Yeah. yeah. And then I moved to Thailand and yeah. it was it was invigorating because I had fun. Yeah. And I was able to have fun in the classroom with students and I was mm -hmm. encouraged to get to know students and to have uh, interaction with them mm -hmm. and have you know be a mentor to them you know that's not a thing in America right. they're like stay right. far away from your students right. don't touch them you know yeah, <laughs> yeah all these kind of things so uh, just to be able to have relationships with students and I feel like at Hinkson because mm -hmm. class sizes are smaller I'm going to be able to have even more that you connection know, you know connection yeah. with students yeah yeah on a deeper level mm -hmm. um, well how did you get along with other teachers Oh, yeah. Because there's, like, the teachers who are the same as you in the shoes, like, they're new yeah. to the school. And there are, like, the people who were there who, when the school was actually, like, made. <laughs> yes. Of the veterans. There's, yeah, there's the veterans. always those that are just, it's like, how long yeah. have you been here? Forever. Have you life. always, you know, been here? <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I feel like... You know, just, just just like the students have accepted me, mm. the, the teachers do that as well. Oh, and maybe more so. Oh, I'm glad. You know, like they invite me to stuff. Sometimes Dude. I'm like, no thanks. But mm. they invite me to stuff. They um, are like, ooh, let's go do this thing together. Mm. And I'm like, ooh, yeah, but not on a school night. <laughs> but yes, you know. I see. You're yeah. part of the club already? Yeah. yeah. And it's real fun when other teachers are like, so... This grade came into my classroom today, and they were talking about how cool you are. And I'm like, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Students think I'm cool. Oh, you are cool. Somehow that, like, helps me, you know, if I could go back and tell, you know, like, middle school me, there are going to be kids one day that say you're cool when yeah. you're an adult. And yeah. I would give myself a high five, even though that probably mess up the space-time continuum. Yep, or something. Right. you would just delete the world by your yeah. little thing. One thing that I've noticed a lot is that students love talking about teachers. Okay. So would you say it's the same way? Like with teachers talking about students. Oh yeah, oh. I think students think teachers talk about them more than they do. 
Really? Because when I was a student, I thought, right now, my teachers are eating lunch and they're talking about us. Because uh-huh. they're like, talk, think about what this kid did today in class. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had a conversation where I'm like, this kid did this in class today. Oh, you know? what? <laughs> I, don't, I don't do that. Unless it was super funny. Oh. Oh, yeah. And then I'm, I'm less likely to tell another teacher about it, more likely to tweet about it. So. Tweet, tweet about it? it. <laughs> Either all in or all out. Yeah. yeah. No I, uh, I tweet a lot about what students say. Oh, really? Do oh, you, yes. Do you quote them or, like, I, my student? I say student one or student oh, two. Student one, yeah, student I don't one. Oh, student one. Oh, names. Mm. But, yes, I do no, I want to check your Twitter now to see what Yeah, like. that's true. <laughs> Follow her on Twitter. I don't Yo, know. if you put a Twitter in the description. <laughs> uh, if you want, sure. sure. Cool. Okay. We're doing it. We're doing it. Was I being quoted? <laughs> yeah, Moses said you haven't been quoted. No, yet. you don't show up enough. Oh. Now Moses' goal is to be quoted on this yeah. on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Do you like? What are your goals as a teacher? Oh, and for the future. Yeah. Oh man, I don't want to teach forever. Mm. Right. Oh, yeah. Um. And so my original goal was to teach for. 10 years and teach in one, like, teach on every continent except Antarctica, obviously. Oh, Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and so, I mean, I've done North America, I've done Asia, I've done Europe, but I honestly don't know anymore because I Mm. like Russia, so maybe I'm going to stay here and then just be done with teaching and then do something else. Till the snow starts snowing, (laughs) and then you're going to come back. like, no. Uh, I'm going to go to Australia, actually. Because I needed to warm up. <laughs> um, yes. So, yeah. So, I want to... That was the original goal, um, was teaching on all the continents. Um, and then move back home, and then, you know, do something else, like mm-hmm. politics or mm-hmm. something. Write what, a book, become famous. What, become what is president. your dream job? Like, what is To be want? president of the United States. To be yes. president of the United States. That is my dream job. <laughs> mm-hmm. Got yes. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, have, I have a way of making that happen. Like, I have, you know, a series of steps that could make that happen please I want to know these no no No. what are these steps I want to know these so option one option one is to teach on all the continents and then go home write a book about it yeah write about Mm. what I learned teaching abroad yeah write mainly about the failed uh, education system in America and how we can fix it Wow. That would get me a, that would become a bestseller, yeah. obviously. Obviously. Yeah. And okay. would um, rocket me to a spot on a presidential cabinet, mm-hmm. secretary of education. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then from that, that would start my political career, and then I would eventually become president. Ooh. Interesting plan. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Yeah. Option two. Oh, oh gosh. Is, that- uh, is learn Russian so that I can become a CIA analyst and then, you know, oh. become director of the CIA and then eventually become president. Ooh. Well, see, George, <laughs> the first George Bush, the 41st president, yeah. so George H.W. Bush, he yeah. was first the CIA director before becoming President. Uh, president, yes, because oh. he was first vice president and then became president. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Can you imagine a U.S. president taught here at Hinkson? Yeah, that'd be cool. Crazy. I would come back and yeah. visit. I could also, so that's option two. Option three is uh, oh, to yeah. teach here again, learn Russian, teach here for a while, become ambassador to Russia, and that would give me enough uh, leeway, like foreign experience, like relations experience to mm. become president. Yeah. So the three options. Crazy. There you go. So, I have at least one vote right here. Boom. I do. Me too. Two. <laughs> I think everybody Become a ball. U.S. citizen and you can vote. Oh, yeah. Easy. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's that easy. Yeah. Just you know. have to take a little test. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pledging of, of allegiance, you know, to America mm-hmm. and stuff. No big deal. Okay. Just like yourself. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Your phone. laughs> So is that it for the first topic? I think, yeah. So let's get started with the comment time. Comment time! We've got comment four, time. four comments today. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first one from Austin Crump. What are your thoughts on the Tesla Cybertruck? Oh. oh. Have, you seen, have you seen that truck? I have, yes. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, who wants to go? Uh, I, I can go. Okay. Uh, I think it's incredible. Uh-huh. <laughs> I love how it looks. Okay. I love how different it is. Mm-hmm. And if I could afford it, I would totally drive it. You probably can. Well, not like... But it's like chip. It's it's in the cheap part of the spectrum, I think. Yeah, but I still can't afford it. <laughs> like I appreciate. I have seven dollars. I yeah. can't buy. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe later. Yeah, once I'm president. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I appreciate how like 
he's trying to like innovate and like do something new because people with trucks like people haven't done anything new with trucks for yeah ever. like yeah. every year it's a new car but not really yeah <laughs> yeah but so like but like you can't just like make the truck look new you have to like make it function new you know yeah like you have to have a new thing that this truck can do that no other truck can do right right that's the point mm. i mean i'm not that big into like trucks and cars and stuff Me but neither. like maybe for the past several years like they've been changing a lot about how the trucks work mm -hmm. but not on how they look so now it's about time that they change how they look oh. and less about what they do. Yeah, but like nobody likes how they look. Like a few people like how they look, but not all the internet is kind of. Have you it. ever been to Texas? <laughs> no. Everybody they owns love a truck. Trucks. Yeah, yeah. but it's like, not the cyber. Okay, people, the internet has memed the cyber truck. That's true. To, to, because they hate how it looks. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I thought it was the other way around. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's weird. They think it's weird. They America think it's doesn't weird. like change. Right. Yeah. So that's when you change weird. stuff, they're like, ooh, that's weird. I don't like that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So if the point of the truck is to look different mm -hmm. and if the general population doesn't like how it looks, then I don't know how it's going to work. Yeah. I thought it was really funny when they were like, the the windows are shattered. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then they threw the thing and then it shatters and it's yeah. like, well, this is awkward. The guy who threw the metal ball, he, he was like, wait. Are you sure? And then Elon Musk was like, "Yeah, yeah, just do it." <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oops. Yeah. Uh, oh well. Gosh. That must have been that was awkward. awkward. That was my favorite part of the whole thing. I don't care about what it looks like. Yeah. That's just hilarious. <sighs> and they sold it too. I mean, there is a video of the armor window working. Oh yeah. Yes. But I mean, I don't know. Yeah. That's the worst time to mess up. Yeah. Honestly, it would terrify me to have windows that are shatterproof on a car because, like, what if I skidded off the road and end up in a river and I needed to get out by Ooh. smashing the window? That's true. Mm. Scary. Well, great. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Elon Musk. Help me out. So yeah. this truck is not going to be that successful, hmm. I predict. I, don't know. I think it'll either be completely, like, a complete failure yeah. or super successful. Yeah. Right. It depends on the price point. How many people are going to be willing to yeah. shell out the thousands of dollars? Oh, yeah, that's the thing. If it's more expensive than the average truck, then, of course. Which it should be, because it has the Tesla name on it. That's right. Oh. Then it's that can drive up the price. It's just... never going to succeed yeah. if it's more expensive than a normal truck. Because usually their their cars have been expensive in the past. Yeah, exactly. That's an interesting view on it. <sighs> Economics 101. Yeah. There you go. It is. Yeah. All right, next comment. Next comment. Next comment from Polina Yershova. What's your favorite animal and why? Okay, real simple. Okay, um, <laughs> I like an I like owls. Owls, owls are dope. Mm. Honestly, <laughs> just a huge, just a huge yeah. gray yeah. owl. It's lit, dude. Okay, anyway. they live hundred years, I think. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, I so want they can pet. turn their head around not three hundred and sixty degrees, but two hundred and eighty degrees. Oh, that's lit. Fun dude. facts with Miss Johnson trademark thing. Wow. Nice, nice. Yeah. I want a pet huge gray owl. Yeah, that's what I want. You can buy pet owls in, in uh, Malaysia. Yeah. They have them at pet stores. Yeah. Mm. That's awesome. I actually know a place you can go to. Dude. Okay, later. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, all right. All right, next person. You, what's your animal, Moses? Actually, like, it would be different. Like, my, there's my favorite animal and an animal that I would like to have a pet ass. Okay, yeah. Uh, so. If it, it's a pet, then I want to get a cat just to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused as to what you're gonna do to the cat. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what happens. He's gonna yeah. eat it. <laughs> and there's a uh, and there's my favorite animal uh, that I used to like in like since middle school, and it's the Arctic fox. Mm -hmm. The okay. way how fluffy it is and kind of yeah. you know those. Have you ever touched one? No. Do you know it's fluffy then? It looks really fluffy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it blends with the snow, and snow is also like fluffy. Okay. I don't know, my middle school logic is like okay. kind of Therefore, lacking. Therefore, it's fluffy. Yeah. <laughs> also, you know, some animals like owls, I can picture them being a predator and they can just eat up a rat and yes. just swallow it. But like yeah. an Arctic fox is like, I don't know what, just goes out and gets a fish. My pet will eat your favorite it. animal. It. <laughs> no, I don't think owls are not going to capture a, a Arctic fox. Arctic fox. Uh, I don't want to see that. Fox are no. too mm. big. And they're like cute and small. Yeah. And kind of, they they really don't look like they they can kill me at least. So I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> they probably kill you. Yeah. Uh, don't ruin like, his dreams. <laughs> you know, like there's cute animals that have a dark side. Yeah. Like penguins, they have teeth. Well, duh. And it's like if you look at it, it's really creepy and kind of like darkness. Yeah. I didn't know this until recently. <sighs> didn't yeah. know they had teeth. Oof, yeah. I was bitten by a duck one time. Oh. Nice. They don't have teeth. 
Oh. So it's like not a bite, it's just... It was like gnawing, yeah. yeah. He, he went for some bread, and oh. he missed the bread. And ate your and he, arm. And he, you know, put my hand, and I was like, Aw. Your arm. Was it painful? We are no longer friends. Did it bleed? Stuck. No. Did the bones no. break? No, nothing no. bad happened. Fatality. And he looks more upset than I did, because, you know, he wanted bread. Mm. Yeah. Bro, what a disappointment. I don't like human. All right. <laughs> yeah. Ms. Johnson, favorite animal and why? Yeah. Okay, so I have two answers for this. Two answers. One... Penguins, mm. because they're always dressed <laughs> to impress. Okay, oh. they wear their little tuxedos. They're so cute. Oh yeah. Uh, macaroni penguins are my personal favorite because of their macaroni hair. Penguins. Okay. Oh really? Um, yes. And so, the second one is a panda, mm, because correct. they are the least racist of all animals mm, because they are nice. white, black, and Asian. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes. I never thought about that. You never You're thought welcome. about that, Charlie. <laughs> that's like that's like us. Yeah, yeah. All three of us were yeah. a panda. Yeah. King Sikushi Panda. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh. oh my wow. Goodness. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Our, our like uh, the the animal spirit animal should be the panda. Yeah. Of our, our podcast, podcast. animal. Okay. Yeah. Podcast Official animal. ACP mascot. Yeah, mascot. Yeah. Not husky. Mm-hmm. Does it make sense? No, it's panda. No, panda. Yeah. Panda. All right. My favorite animal, uh, and this is like really boring, but it's just a cat. Mm. Cats wow. are super cute and adorable, and they're soft mm-hmm. and. Like, they purr, and they just, like, sleep all the time, and they're amazing, and I love them. Yeah. That's it. Um, okay. Unpopular opinion? Yeah. Cats are two things. One, jerks. Yeah. And two, the spawns of Satan. Yeah. Mm. Whoa. Uh, honestly, I agree. <laughs> Whoa. Just a roast choice animal. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm Your favorite animal yeah. is Satan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, but yeah. I'm popular opinion. And I mean, I've owned four cats. Oh, wow. wow. So you so, know. So I have personal no. experience. Ooh. Why do you think they land on their feet all the time? Satan. Satan. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Shoot. <Yeah. laughs> Why do they eat fish? Because Satan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they hate water? Wait, Satan. Satan. Oh, my. oh, my goodness. <laughs> Charlie. They probably swim in lava. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> okay. Well, Next comment. Next comment is from JB Rocks. I guess this is from uh, Jaden. Jaden? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Many rocks. Yeah, J Bean rocks. <laughs> uh, he says, uh, make a story with each of you saying one word each. We've definitely oh. done that before. We have. We have, but I mean, we can try. It, Again. It's like so, it's like story time, but like yes. everyone says one you know word. Yeah, this works. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah. Okay. Can so, it be a contraction? Contraction? Like, like it's, it's yeah, or sure. don't. Sure, yeah. that works. That works. Okay. Sure. I'll stir. Okay. Um, right. My sister went to the mall to get a pair of nice knives. We <laughs> also couldn't get any of her <laughs> clothes. What? <laughs> Mom <laughs> said to not listen to what strangers <laughs> tell them to <laughs> do. <laughs> Where is this going? <laughs> so my sister went to the mall to, to buy, buy, a, to nice buy a pair of knives. Nice knives. Nice knives. Nice knives. And then... Uh, we also couldn't get any of her clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and then mom said not, not to, to listen, listen to, to what strangers s- tell you to, to do. do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, nice wow. story. There that you was go, Jaden. Story. That was wow. very enlightening. <laughs> yes. Very strange indeed. Here we go. Okay. Last comment. This one is from Amy Joy. She said, first... Edit. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha. <laughs> ha. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Oh. Take that, Paulina. Okay. <laughs> so we got a first trend going on. Yeah. So Anton decided to be first once. Mm-hmm. And then, like, ever since then, there was this battle to be the first comment on our episode. <laughs> yeah. People are staying up till 2 a.m. to be first on our episode. Yeah. <laughs> Really Why did you stay up so late last night? I don't know. Oh. It's like yeah. actually, you can schedule when the uh, like video is uploaded, yeah. so you okay. can like upload it, but then it won't publish until whenever you want it to. 
Oh, oh so you can just like you set it to be like 3 yeah, a.m. I can like, like troll people. I think I will do that this time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> be aware. What if I am magically first? That'd be fun. Ooh, bro. We'll have to beat Ooh. all the freaking. We can who delete want first. the real first comment and then tell you to comment. First. <laughs> <laughs> just like, I'll like actually first thing we have to break him like, yeet by. Sounds <laughs> corruption in here. <clears throat> Sounds like government corruption. Yeah. yeah. Am I the government? Yeah. Okay. Charlie's the government. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I think that's it for comment time. Thank cool. you for all of your comments. Cool. Yes. Keep commenting, people. We want more of your content, dude. Yes. Please okay. make our next comment time more enjoyable. It was <laughs> very enjoyable this time, though. Yeah. 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 But, like, do it more. <laughs> 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 All right, so for the guest topic... It's a billion. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of just a whole lot of different things. Aliens, conspiracy theories, presidency, and philosophy. We already kind of talked about your presidency, like, you're yeah. planning to get there. Yeah. yeah. But, like, what do you plan to do once you get there? Oh, man. Like, Ooh. a lot of <laughs> So, I am... Pretty conservative, okay. which means with stuff like abortion, you know, mm-hmm. like pro-life. Yeah, you go. Uh, so like not for abortion. Right. And uh, so you would outlaw it. You can't do that. There you can't was do that. there was a a Supreme Court case Roe v. Wade that allowed that to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can't outlaw it. But what you can do is take government funding away from Planned Parenthood, which oh. provides most abortions. Mm-hmm. And also, it is a private company, and so they don't need, you know, taxpayer dollars in order to function. Mm. So most yeah. people are like, oh, you can't take taxpayer funding away from Planned Parenthood. How will they exist? And I'm like, they are a independent company. They can do what they want. Right. Mm-hmm. They don't need your tax dollars. Oh. Um, but, I mean, small government... So government, I am libertarian in most aspects where the government just shouldn't be involved in your life. Mm. Uh, You should be able to live your life the way you want it without government telling you what to do. Right. And uh, so I would abolish the IRS, which is I would get rid of the income tax. Oh. Mm. Um, And, you know, I would privatize the United States Postal Service. Okay. Because I would save the government literally billions of dollars. Mm. Um, if you get rid of Medicaid and Medicare in the United States, the U.S. would be, uh, the annual budget would be in a surplus every year. Dude. Oh. So privatize all that. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So you're taking power away from the government and giving it back to the people. Oh. Right. Yeah. But then, like... Shoot, there's so much to do. <laughs> so if the IRS was abolished, how would taxes work? Would they just not exist, or would it be different? Taxes would be on the... Uh, so what the government... Taxes would then... Because state governments still tax, right? Because yeah. states still need taxes. The local governments still need tax dollars, so local taxes would still exist. And then the federal government, instead of taxing the people, would tax the states mm-hmm. and take a percentage of the state taxes instead of you know taxing the people... Specifically, yeah. which if you were in my U.S. history class mm-hmm. this past, you would have learned that <laughs> Abraham Lincoln was the first right. president to. It was during the Civil War that the income tax was first established in America oh. because the the government needed more money for the wars. Yeah, for mm-hmm. the war. Yeah. Oh. And it just just like under Congress yeah, for like till now. Yeah, it's just been steadily oh. rising. I mean, the government still needs more money for the debt. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. How do you plan to deal with the debt? You know, I read a tweet that was like, it's like $29 trillion yeah. the U.S. debt is right now. And it's <clears> expected <throat> by 2030 to be $100 trillion. $100 at its, trillion. At its current rate. And see, when the number gets that big, it's just hard to fathom what that number means. So most politicians are like, I, that it's fake. You know, like, <laughs> that number it doesn't seem real, so it doesn't seem you know like an issue. Yeah. But literally, all you need to do is get rid of things, and then you can start paying back your debts. Oh. I mean, you get rid of all these things that the U.S. government is spending money on, mm-hmm. like what, like, like Medicare, Medicare and Medicaid, Medicaid. Mm-hmm. and you get rid of the U.S. Postal Service, which is literally billions of dollars. Mm-hmm. Right? If you privatize it, it doesn't go away, but the U.S. government isn't putting the bill. Oh, okay. So it's not going away. It just becomes like FedEx or UPS. So the quality of life is the same. Quality of life is the same. But... Those people still keep their jobs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just somebody else owns it instead of 
you know, the U.S. president, which literally one of their jobs is choosing the postmaster general of every single post office. Really? Yeah, because it is a, you know, it's a branch of the executive branch. So that's right. part of the, the president's job. And so you just privatize that. You save literally billions of dollars every year. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay, right. So if, I, if it's that simple, then why haven't the government done that yet? Um, because government likes having all the power. Right. Exactly. And so mm. you don't, I mean, there hasn't been a president that's been like, you know what I want to do during my presidency? I want to take all the power away from me. Oh. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever does that because they like power. Even right. if you're a Republican president who would say that you're anti-big government, mm -hmm. you know, you would still say, I like power. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. It's not like the Democrats running for president right now who are totally socialist and want literally all the power. Right. You know, and they say so, that they want all the power. But, I mean, still, you like the power. Right, and you don't? It's not about the power. It's about empowering the people. Mm -hmm. If you give the people the power, then they will empower you because they like having the power. Oh. Right. Oh, that reminds me of, like, the Romans' times when, like, Augustus or someone... Like, gave so much power to the people that people eventually, like, made him into the emperor or something. I don't want to be emperor, but yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> right. I do not want to be emperor. <laughs> We're if this shows this. up and, like, because I could run for president. I'll be old enough <laughs> in 2028. Oh, 2028. Yeah. There you go. Miss Johnson. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, though, like, <clears throat> the only th area where I think the people would be uncomfortable with, like, your conservative values. Yeah. Because of big people who, like, are mm. pro-abortion, yeah. pro this, pro that. Yeah. And so how would you, like, work around that, like... Again, it's it's <clears throat> not it's not me saying I'm against that, but it's me saying the government shouldn't be mandating this and oh, shouldn't be okay. paying for it. Mm. So by getting rid of the $500 million a year that the U.S. government gives to Planned Parenthood, I'm not saying... Planned Parenthood can't exist. I'm just saying U.S. taxpayers are no longer paying for something that they may or may not approve of. Ooh. That's all. Isn't it's just America mostly conservative? The middle, uh, so I would say, like, other than in big cities, yes, mm. for the most part. Oh, yeah. Okay. But That's the big true. cities is where all the people are. Yeah. yeah. You know? You very obviously thought this through, like, two weeks facing back. Mm. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've literally been thinking about being president since I was in high school. Yeah, that's Ooh, wow, genius. That's pretty cool. I love that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> how about aliens? Yeah. yeah, how about aliens? Let's how just transition aliens. like that. <laughs> 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 aliens, okay. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about aliens? What about aliens? Do you think aliens could exist? Well, why do, why do you know scientists say that aliens exist? Like, what is their reasoning for why um, aliens could exist? Because there's a lot of planets, like... Hours yeah, in the universe. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. what do they say is the reason why, you know, life exists on this planet? It's because, because of the aliens. Okay, that's <laughs> one. That's actually one theory. option, one theory. It's called yeah. spermicide, which is like an alien. Well, it's two different versions. So there's one that some alien life form was on a meteor that hit, like, I was going to say America, but that's not right. It just hit the world at some point in history, and then, mm -hmm. bam, you know, life. <laughs> that was nice. Another one right. is spermicide, which is literally an alien race came to Earth and then spread their sperm. Got and it. And that, mm. that spawned. Mm. That spawned. That reminds me of the in, uh, interstellar ending. Like, there's one character. You're about to ruin this movie for me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. Well, I saw halfway through, and I was like, I'm oh. done with this. This is weird. Oh, okay. Fine. Yeah. But go ahead. Do it. Go for it. Well, I kind of made my point, so I don't oh, want okay. to ruin it for you. Oh, it's fine. I, don't, I will probably never watch it. <laughs> okay, fine. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but you you're still, okay. <laughs> I was like, you're still not going to give yeah. me the ending? Oh, okay. 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 But anyway, did they go to another planet and then, like, seed it? Well, you, you kind of, yeah, like, they brought a lot of, like, sperm and eggs and, oh, okay. like, the populators. Weird. It That's strange. Is, yeah. There was a movie with Nicolas Cage called The Knowing, in which his son was, like, seeing all these weird numbers, and then his dad, like, started looking up, like, what these numbers meant, and turned out, like, he, like, the end of the world was coming, and he oh. found out about it, right? Like, aliens or something told him about it. 
And then this girl was having the same thoughts, right? And they were about the same age. And I was like, this is going to end weirdly. Oh, it did. Oh, so it did. <laughs> the, the world ended, but they took these kids and put them on another planet. And those kids were going to, you know, start a new oh. race of people on a new planet. It was weird. Uh-huh. It's a very strange movie. Yep. But very good. I mean, I was into it the whole time. Mm. I was cool. like, ooh, <laughs> Nicolas Cage overacting and everything. But that's okay. Oh. He kind of <laughs> overacts. Yeah, I don't know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. He just does, that's his thing. So do you believe in aliens? Wait, do you actually okay. think aliens exist? Okay, yeah. so here's Big my question. thing with aliens. Um, is science will tell us that life can exist on other planets because it happens spontaneously here. Mm-hmm. But if you ascribe to the, th- the thought that God created life on this planet and he created it uniquely to exist on this planet, then it would make sense that life doesn't exist on other planets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then that begs the question, would God create another planet that could contain life? And if he did, why is it not in scripture? Mm-hmm. Or are we just not, you know, does it not matter that we not know everything? Because I had this conversation one time with a person and I was like, well, it doesn't make sense that life would exist on other planets. You right. know, God didn't tell us about it. And she's like, yeah. why would you think you're important enough for God to tell us? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, ooh. Maybe we're just not meant to even see other life creatures. Yeah, what if it what if God created multi universes? Mm, like bro. the multiverse exists and God created the multiverse. And maybe that's why people see UFOs all the time, is that people are starting in other universes are starting to figure out how to travel through the multiverse. Hmm. But <laughs> <laughs> wait, so then if we were living in a multiverse then yeah. there would be separate universes with, like, separate Bibles and separate... Like, gods. Maybe it's not gods. separate Bibles or separate gods. There's just one Bible and one God. Everybody is just universes. living uh-huh. in a different universe. Yeah. Different place, same time, same yeah. thing. Well, maybe not same time. Oh. Heaven's infinite. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. But p- humanity is not infinite. Humanity is finite. Yes, because of the fall. Which means humanity... In its finite form, wouldn't fill all of heaven. Exactly. Right. So it could has room for the multiverses of people. It could, theoretically. Okay. Yeah. Every tribe, nation, language, and tongue. Mm-hmm. It doesn't say just on this planet. Yep. Great. All right. <laughs> but it does say a multitude of people, right? Multitude. Well, that means Jesus has to come down and die multitude. for all those planets. <laughs> Not necessarily. Really? Not necessarily. I mean, if he only died in one planet, which would be ours, then we have like the most special planet, I guess. Like, yeah. wouldn't that make sense? Huh. Yeah, like, we won the lottery. <laughs> because God, you know, chose this planet to, you know, specifically die in. But, you know, Mormons That's teach... Heavy. So, Mormons teach that um, that you can become a god, right? That our, our god was once a man, uh-huh. right? And he was so good at being a man that he became a god of his own universe and that you too if you are a good enough person can become a god of your own universe oh yeah well then that would suggest multiple gods which goes against christianity yes yeah they also don't accept jesus as being like a virgin birth and oh. you know all that kind of stuff there's a whole bunch of different beliefs yeah mm-hmm. there's also they believe in multi-levels of hell like depending on how bad you oh, are yeah. like you nine. go into a different there's nine circles like nine yeah circles. but it, i mean it's not dante's right it's right. not dante's levels of hell different. it's different like if you're real bad then you know you could be in hell forever but if you were like just kind of bad then maybe like a thousand years then you can get out maybe a thousand years. all right i don't i don't know dude that doesn't sound very yeah Blue that's not biblical yeah uh, okay, no, I'm thinking, like, in Genesis, it's like, in the beginning, God created the heavens, everything else, and, and the, the earth. earth. Yeah, the, the earth. earth. Mm-hmm. Yes. But one planet where we are. Yes, mm-hmm. I agree. Right? That means that this space is special. Mm-hmm. Like, yes. this heavens, like, general, oh, there's planets yes. here, stars here, whatever, heavens. And then there's earth, like that. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. a special place, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And so I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't believe in aliens either. I like learning about conspiracy theories mm-hmm. and reading conspiracy. about them and hearing about them and going, that's crazy. <laughs> and then, you know, talking about them. But I'm not a conspiracy theorist. So. Right. Yeah. Did you know that Earth is flat? <laughs> it's, not, it's not. But you know what? So I, um, I forget. I had a picture. So I was at a, it was really random, but I was at a Buddhist 
um, temple in Malaysia, and there was a giant globe there. And so I pointed on the globe, like, to where it was, and then I had mm-hmm. a friend take a picture, because why not? Yeah. And uh, that was my profile picture on mm-hmm. lots of social media. And this random person um, <laughs> messaged me, and he goes, because, like, on my Twitter, like, bio or whatever, it says, striving to make Jesus known among the nations. And um, oh, he no. was like, if you're a Christian, why are you pointing at a globe? And I was like... <sighs> what? <laughs> like, literally was like, what are you talking oh, about? And no. he was like, well, the world is flat. And I was like, what? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, the world is flat, and um, the globe is like Satan's tool. Like, thinking that the world is a sphere is Satan's tool. And I was like, please explain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> how, okay. How is it I've tool? never actually talked talked to a person that believed that the world was flat before. So this was intriguing to me. Yes. And so he was like, yeah, the world til- tilts on its axis at 66.6 degrees. That's the mark of the beast, which that's not true, by the way. Yeah, it's 23 degrees, I think. Yeah, it's 23.4, <laughs> yeah. I think, degrees. Um, so I didn't tell him this because <laughs> I was just, you know, letting him go, you know. <laughs> and it was like 20 or 66.6 degrees and like all this stuff and I was like you're really crazy this just makes Christians look bad (laughs) yeah it does I know and so he was like and then I quoted the verse because there's a verse in uh, it's either Isaiah or Job that says that God sits above the curvature of the earth and Mm -hmm. I quoted that and Mm -hmm. he was like have you ever seen a pancake they're pretty curved and I was like (laughs) you're right but no Lamau. Which there's a really funny video of uh, this guy <laughs> trying to prove that the world is flat by taking a plate and pouring water on it. And then he takes a tennis ball <laughs> and pours water on it and goes, now what do you think? And like, the world's round. You're <sighs> insane. Oh, one of the craziest things is one like this self, self-proclaimed scientist. Like, self-proclaimed. Yeah, shows a globe <laughs> and then shows an airplane. And like he goes around, like, he shows the airplane going around the world and then on Australia. And then he says, now if you see closely, the airplane is now upside down, which means when it lands (laughs) on Australia, the airplane should be upside down. And I'm, like, going, like, through dimensions of all intelligence. That's me and, you know, those old ladies are like, that's not how this works. Yeah. 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 I think a lot of flat earthers, or at least some, are just doing it for the meme. Like, yes. I they hope they want I hope just the attention. Yeah, me too. I, hope. I did teach in America, and so, you know, the, the American education system has failed a lot, but <laughs> I hope it hasn't failed that much. Today, I was listening to a conspiracy theory podcast. It's literally called Conspiracy Theories. Nice. It's really good. So <laughs> every, every topic gets to... Um, two different episodes and they explain the history of it in the first one and then the second one they actually talk about the conspiracy theory and the both mm-hmm. sides cool and um i was listening to the holy grail today and the conspiracy theory is that the holy grail isn't like the cup that jesus drank from it's not his blood it's mm-hmm. not anything like that but mary magdalene and jesus were married and the holy grail is his like lineage like, it's his son. Like, Jesus had a son. Whoa. I know. Uh, it's really crazy. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. But I was listening to that today. And they take a lot. So most people who believe in that conspiracy theory take a lot of what the Muslims teach about Jesus oh. and his death. So Muslims believe that Jesus didn't die on the cross, that it was a substitute. Right. They believe somebody died on the cross, but it was a person made to look like Jesus and that Jesus actually escaped. Um, Which just gives you gives the whole point. Yeah. yeah, and so this person, they were talking about, there's some people that say that, you know, there he didn't die. There's some people who say that there was opium in the sponge that they gave him, and so it looked like he was dead, but he actually Whoa. recovered and then escaped to France with his, <laughs> with Mary Magdalene and his son. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, his son, of yeah, course. Yeah, and his son. And that the Knights Templar were you know, credited with, you know, keeping the secret and keeping them safe. And that they still are protecting the secret that Jesus had a child, and they're still protecting his lineage. And that is the Holy Grail. 
Yeah, that sounds fake as that. <laughs> it's just like, nah. Yeah, yeah it's pretty crazy. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And there's another one called, about the men in black being real. Oh, gosh. And we just that, don't remember because of the flesh. No. No, oh. so men in black, like, they are robotic-like people who, after you see something strange, will come visit you and basically you know, convince you that you cannot tell anybody about it. But oh. there, you know, are really creepy things, and pretty much all of them are the same. Like, people across the board will say the same things, and the same kind of people come to visit them, oh. that they're, like, robotic-like men that look like they are skeletons. You know, not, like, they have flesh on them. <laughs> they're not just, you know, walking skeleton. But right. they're very robotic, and it's like they're fake people. Right. Uh, there's actually a video of them uh, that you can find on YouTube. Uh, there were lights uh, that people saw in a hotel that was by Niagara Falls. Right. And oh. as soon as the guy saw it, this person appears, right? You can see it on a video, and, like, a person appears and is, like, this robotic guy in a black suit and, you know, puts the fear of people, like, very famous people have seen them before. Oh. You know, like, they've appeared to all kinds of people, and they write about it, and they're all similar in explaining what they talk about. And, like, mm. all these. So, Men in Black might be real. Never know. Mm. Uh, I want to see an alien just so I can see if they come visit me. Yeah. Maybe if I become famous, I'll see one of the Men in Black. <laughs> and then I can... Or you don't have to be. If you yeah. see something... Unnatural. Well, yeah. she said that like a lot of famous people see them in right. black. So yeah, it, if, they have if one of us were black. famous, yeah, yeah like but, Britney Spears and Dan Aykroyd, who comedian mm-hmm. from back in the nineties, is really famous. But yeah, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. yeah, I love conspiracy theories. Mm-hmm. You find some crazy stuff out there. You do. Yeah. You really do, don't you? Yeah. It has no effect on anything at all. No, <laughs> not at all. But it's, it's just really fun to think about. It's really yes, fun. It yeah. I find it f- fascinating that people ascribe to those feelings. Like, Men in yeah, black, real, real boys. Yeah. 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 Not clickbait. Nope. Men in black is real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. My uh, my second year teaching, I had like a advanced placement class, mm-hmm. and so I made them write a paper, and they all had to research a different conspiracy theory, oh. and that was super fun for me. <laughs> Cool. And for them too, they were like, "This is the coolest project ever." You know, <laughs> it was Perfect. Really fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You also wanted to talk about philosophy. One of the topics was philosophy. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious. What philosophy in particular interests you the most? Yeah. Like what? So there's a lot. Yeah. There is a lot. Yeah. And uh, I mean, there's philosophies of education. Yeah. I listen to this really cool podcast about mm-hmm. philosophy, and of course. Um, yeah, why not? Now I have a lot more free time because I ride a bus to school, so mm, you got to nice. entertain yourself somehow. And uh, there's one about the philosophy of hope mm-hmm. and how hope doesn't make sense. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Because, I mean, like, they were talking about hope and faith paired together oh. seem to be oxymorons. Because mm-hmm. if you have hope, then technically that's different than faith, right? And if you have faith, then you technically aren't hoping. Because you have faith, but if you're hoping, then you technically don't have faith. Because you're saying that you hope that something will happen that's different oh. than faith, right? So oh. it's weird. Yeah, it's weird that hope and faith and scripture are paired together all the time. Because you're like, those two shouldn't go together because they're. Country if you're too. hoping, then you don't have faith. But if you have faith, then you don't have to hope. It explained like how hope and faith seem to not go together, but they are always paired together mm-hmm. in scripture. Hoping. Is like, let's define both of them. Hoping is like you want something to happen. Okay. You hope that this will happen. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. But if you have faith that it will happen, then you're not hoping. Well, of course you are. No, you're not. You still want to ha- it to happen. Well, if you have faith, then you believe it's going to happen. Yeah, inevitably. faith mm-hmm. is believing that it will, not hoping that it will. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So you believe that it will, and you can also want it to happen. Like, I hope this will happen, and I have faith that it will. So you're saying that. If I have faith that the world ends tomorrow, I technically don't want it to happen, but I can... You don't hope it. You hope it doesn't. You hope it doesn't. But I have faith that it... Faith, hoping something you happen is like wanting it to happen. That's how, that's, how, that's how you could say it. Well, but there's also this, like, you're hoping because you're not completely sure that it will happen. There is right. that. Yeah. 
There is. Like, if I say, I hope you feel better. Yes. Right? Would you, you feel, want me to feel better. Would you feel less happy if I said, I have faith that you will feel better? You can Which do both. Which one would you rather have me say, though? I, I hope genuinely that you will feel better because I want you to feel better. Yeah. And I believe that you will feel better. I feel like God will help, will cure you and make you better. So then you don't have hope because you just have faith. I have both. <laughs> okay. Technically, you only have one of them. I want it to happen, and I believe it will happen. Technically, you only have one of them. They, they, it seems to me like they really do contradict each other. Yeah. Why? You just can't pair them together because they're two different things. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Two yeah. different things, but they can still coexist. Like, I can want something to happen and believe it will. Why not? I mean, I would agree with you because Paul pairs them together all the time. Right. Um, I think it's Romans, specifically, that are yeah. like, Hope and faith and I mean, all that sort of thing. Assuming the Bible is true, there has to be some kind of answer as to how these two things mm-hmm. can coexist. Yeah. I guess we just don't know what that is. Let's We have hope and faith. Hope and faith. Yeah. <laughs> they can be paired together. Gosh. Yeah. Does that help you? <laughs> okay, uh, let's share. Sure. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, hold on. Oh, so, I think it's Hebrews, so that's not Paul. I don't believe me, Paul. Let me give you an example. Right? Let's an say I story. want I want somebody to get saved. Right. Okay. Right? Let's say I want that. Right. I hope, I hope that, that, that that person will get saved yes. because I want them to get saved. Yeah. And then I'm praying about it and God's like, yeah, I'm, yeah, they're going to get saved, right, eventually. Yeah. And so now I still want them to get saved. It doesn't go away. And you still have yeah. faith. But now that, but now that God saved. says, like, yeah, it's going to happen, I have faith in what he said and yeah. I believe that we will get saved. That yeah. kind of transitions, they can coexist. though. I think, yeah. it's, I think it's a deeper, like, faith is a deeper hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but it doesn't get rid of hope. Yeah, of hope? yeah, yeah. So here's a philosophical thing. Yeah, go. So I was actually, I took a philosophy class in college, and I did not go to a Christian school. I went to a secular university. And so anybody listening, if you're thinking about going to a secular university and you want to talk about it, come talk to me. Oh, yeah. Um, there you go. Because I went to a public school and never went to, had no Christian school experience until I started teaching that one. Hmm. Um, and so I uh, was in this class. And we were talking about the death penalty, oh, right? Oh, here we go. And whether or not the death penalty was okay. Yeah. And uh, the professor was actually being observed by his, like, department chair at the time. Mm-hmm. And so the department chair raised his hand, and he had, like, this really deep, like, Morgan Freeman kind of style voice. Mm-hmm. And he goes, in all of this, we're assuming that death is worse than life. Wow. <laughs> and we all stopped, and we were like... Oh, my goodness. Whoa. Whoa. It's true, though, yeah. right? Because we're by punishing someone to death, mm-hmm. we would say that that's the worst penalty, yeah. right? They call it capital punishment, right? Because that's, like, yeah. the top one. Mm-hmm. But we are assuming that death yeah. is worse than life yeah. by sentencing them to death. But what if it's not? Like, if they're mm-hmm. believers, we would say... It's way better. Oh, it's life. way better. You know, yeah. Paul said, you know, better to, you know, to live as Christ than die as gain. You know, mm-hmm. like death would be better. Yeah. So are we actually, so as Christians, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. If a person kills a person and we want them, I mean, to suffer. Yeah. Right? We would yeah. be then praying that they would not become believers in Christ. Otherwise, well, they wouldn't like, suffer. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds pretty that's, that's dark. Definitely not. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. Right. I know. Thing. But I know what you're yes. saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. but that's that is actually another yeah. question. Do you think that if someone kills someone, can they repent and like be forgiven from that? Of course. Of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like there's no sin mm-hmm. that's, that's too big. That's too big. But then there becomes a better question, would the believers accept a person who like at the death penalty would like there's an argument like, oh, if someone repents like just before they die, mm-hmm. like yeah. Yeah, the really... story. Okay, so the story of the prodigal son, for example, yes. is that is that story. Yeah. Because you have a son that you know gets his inheritance, leaves, comes back, dad accepts. Well, what does his brother do? His brother is jealous. Yeah. Like, how dare you? Like, you never threw me a party, dad. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I've been here. And I've been the good son. You know, but that's God saying, it doesn't matter how far away you were, as soon as you come back, you will be accepted, mm-hmm. right? So it doesn't matter what you've done. I will accept you, and you will be my son, right? Or you will be my child. Yeah. And so the other child, we are to not be the brother yeah. of that person. We are to say, no, we are accepting you back into the fold. Mm-hmm. Right. That's right. Yeah. <sighs> That's interesting. And we would look, so your question of 
you know, deathbed confession, is that enough? We would look to Jesus on the cross, right? Jesus spent three years of his life. He was the son of God, and he only had one convert. And that was while he was on the cross. And that person, what did he tell him? Yeah. Yes. That day, you today, on this day, you will be with me in paradise. Yes. Boom. Right? And okay. so that's all it needed. Like, mm-hmm. all he needed to do was to confess yeah. who Jesus was. And that, that was enough to get him into heaven. That criminal was yeah. just going to die. And yep. people say, who say, like, uh, well, I'm going to do all these things and just repent at the last moment. You oh, don't yeah. know. You just yeah, don't you know. don't know when that person that time is. Yeah. Yeah. You can be as lucky as that criminal who was on the cross with Jesus or, like, yeah. As unlucky as the other criminal who was on the other side of the oh, yeah. cross, Absolutely. who just denied Jesus and eventually, like, yeah. Yeah. did not believe in Christ, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like left and right. It's just one moment, but different people. Yeah. And it is important that the person that uh, the criminal was on Jesus' left side, because yeah. the right side is the exalted side. Yeah. Right? Uh, but he was on the left side. Mm-hmm. So that's important. Yeah. For the time period. Fun facts with Ms. Johnson. Yeah. Let's go. Dude, you, you have a lot. There's a lot in your brain that's like really interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's quite interesting. I'll love that. Yeah. All right, well, I think that's it for today. Yeah, we had a lot um, of stuff yeah, to discuss. That yeah. is yeah. a lot of content. Let's go. Dude, thank you for coming on. Yeah. Thanks for having awesome. me. Yeah, thank you. Like, it's been a real pleasure, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, if you want to be a guest... Like Miss Johnson was. Mm-hmm. All right, you can hit up me or Moses or Charlie. Mm-hmm. Teachers are gonna cut or should start coming on now. Yes. Yes. I first teacher guest. Mm-hmm. I broke the ice. Yeah, you, you are a trendsetter. You Thank we're you. paving the way for more teachers to come on. Yes. yes. If you want. It's mm-hmm. not scary. All right. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> we did not force you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you the money later. Cut that out. Because. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thank you guys for listening, and we will see you guys next time. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening. Bye.